Hi, welcome back to Wee Brune Van. The van is packed, Kira is sitting in the back, and we are basking ourselves in this glorious sunshine here in Scotland. <laughs> I wish it was like this all the time. I can tell you it wasn't this morning when I got up. The van was uh, really quite heavily frosted, so I was a good 10 minutes scraping the windscreen and going round the van to get rid of all that frost. So it does feel lovely, but I think we're still in the midst of winter. The daffodils are out, but they're not flowering yet. That's always a good sign of spring. It's definitely not spring and it's very cold. So we're going to head off in the van for another wee break and we're going to try and follow the good weather, aren't we? Yes, we are. So I've had a wee look at the weather and as far as I can tell, the better weather is on the west coast because there's snow up Aberdeen Way coming down on the east. So yeah. we're going to chase the sun, as they say. We're heading west to Glasgow with plans to go to the southeast. We've parked up at a little car park beside Greenan Castle. We're going to have our soup and then we're going to have a wander out, uh, take Kira for a walk and we'll go along and have a look at the castle. So Trish has got the soup on. Did you think we were going to get parked in this car park at all? <laughs> Put it this way, I so <laughs> scrunched down to get through. But there was another car coming the other way and he just went like that, gave me a thumbs up. Oh, yeah, yeah. You always wonder about these yeah, things, yeah. don't you? It's just comfort, isn't it? Well, it is. I mean, the van is slightly under two metres. Yeah. But you always have doubts, don't you? Kira, yeah. do you want something to eat? Kira, you want something? Come on. Right, you can have that or you can have that. Which one is it? I think she wants that. Do you like the new step then? Yes, I do. So this was a box that Mike had a tool in and he was getting rid of the tool. So I said to him, why can we not use that as a step? Made of metal. And inside, we're able to put all Kira's stuff in my wee section for our treats. So I'm going to paint it up, prime it, paint it up and make sure it doesn't rust and it's sturdy. Yeah, hopefully it's bomb proof this one. Who knows, I'll try running over it again will I? Well, that's what happened with the last one wasn't it? Yeah. It was also a toolbox but it was plastic so this yeah. one might be a little bit more robust. And it's got a bit of support here. Yeah. When you put your foot down. It might rust though, that's the only thing. Well, hopefully once I've treated it. Listen, if it rusts and gets ruined, we'll get another one. Yeah. We'll try a different method. Yeah. <laughs> Off we go for a walk, playing ball with Kira, who has fun being chased by an Irish setter. And there's more ball play on the way to the castle. We think this trail will take us to the castle, but we're not totally sure, so we stop to ask one of the locals. Aye, aye. Hi. Do you know if you can get up to the castle? Oh, yes, you can. Uh -huh. uh. You'll have to go round the other side of it. Or, you go uh, round that way, yeah? yeah uh -huh. Just go past the castle to the end of the sort of rock bit. Aye. And there's a wee slope of sand just going up right. to the bushes. We follow the lady's directions, heading down onto the beach, and sure enough, we get our first close-up view of the castle, which stands right on the very edge of a small cliff top. I head up the path first. It's quite steep, and when I get to the top, I can just see Trish making her way up to join me at Greenan Castle. Greenan Castle was built in 1603 for John Kennedy. At the time, the Kennedys were the largest landowners in southwest Scotland, with over 10 castles to their name. All that's left is the main tower, with the foundations of a larger building next to the tower. We're heading back to the van and Trish goes ahead with Kira. 
Well, that was a Green Inn Castle. It was a really nice little place, wasn't it? It was very, very good. The beach was lovely and the view from up at the castle was great. You could see right over to air. Yeah, you could. And did you notice the daffodils? Yeah. After you speaking about daffodils. This morning yeah. and saying that it's not spring yet. Well, it's spring up here. It must be warmer up here. Well, I think Ayrshire has like a Gulf Stream or something goes through it because you see palm trees down Ayrshire. Ah, uh, you do, actually, you do. So that would probably account for the daffodils. Um, anyway, we were tempted to park up for the night here because it's a lovely little spot. But we also want to see into air. So we're going to head into air. There's a park up on the Esplanade. Going to try that? Yep, let's do that. Okay. We arrive at the Esplanade in air, which seems to go on forever. It's £10 per night here, but it's free between October and March, so we don't have to pay. And we head off for a walk into air. come across the Tam O'Shanter Inn. It's Ayr's oldest pub and is named after Rabbi Burns' famous poem. Burns was born in Ayr and would come here for a drink and it's a warm welcoming place with a well-stocked bar and quotes from Tam O'Shanter around the walls. <laughs> Heading back to the van now. It's been a busy old day, hasn't it? Yes, it's been really good. So we've just came out of the Fox and Willow. We were feeling a bit peckish, so we went in and we had a lovely meal because dogs were allowed fish and chips. Yeah. Got it's... to have it at the seaside. You have. It has to be done. Um, I really enjoyed mine, did yes, you? Yes, it was very nice. And the wee gin on the side was lovely. Yeah. <laughs> and we're starting to see daffodils everywhere now. Yes, we are. Sprouting up everywhere. Anyway, we're going back to the wee Brune van now. We're going to crash out for tonight. Um, not sure what we're doing tomorrow. I don't think we'll go too far, but we'll decide in the morning, eh? Yes. I've checked that ice on the window. It seems to be on the inside. Yeah, there was ice on the window and the inside on the kitchen area as well. Aye, uh, so... Here we are, this is the problem. You can even see where it's dripped. There's little drips of ice there. And so it's on the outside and it's on the inside too. I think what's happened is when we put the heater on this morning, some of it's melted here and it's sort of ran down and then I think it's re-iced up again. It's so cold this morning. Maybe, yeah. Are you glad we moved last night because there was a wee bit of bother from boy racers, wasn't there? Yeah. I mean, they stopped um, round about nine o'clock, half nine-ish, so it was really not too bad, but yeah, I think it made Ke uh, Kira a bit nervous. I felt just a little bit safer when we snuggled in beside this big motorhome, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, it was much better, and pulling the roof down. Yeah, it meant, it meant that they couldn't really get anywhere near us because we were parked up beside this big motorhome. Um, and then there's large concrete edgings on the other side of yeah. us, so I, I felt quite safe. Yeah, so did I. What are you gunning at, Kira? She wants, she sees the beach and wants to get hey. out. Oh, she's in the sun, look. <laughs> well, I think that's where we're planning on going, isn't it? Having a wee walk along the beach? Yeah, we'll have a wee walk along, maybe see if we can get a bacon roll somewhere for you. Not for you? Not for me, no. <laughs> I'll have an egg one. There's a spring in our step because we're looking forward to having breakfast and it's just a 15 minute walk to the Pavilion Cafe. It's really nice inside and we've just about got the place to ourselves. There's a retro feel about the place and also a nautical theme going on. We tuck into our breakfast rolls and they were well worth the walk. And we don't forget Kira, she gets a doggy sausage. Back at the van. You got Kira in? Yep, got it all in. 
I'm just going to check if the windscreen is still all frozen. Let it go, let it go. What's that? Frozen. Let it go, <laughs> let it go. You should have been on the stage, you know that. What's uh, that? Right, let's have a wee look in here. Right, I think the windscreen's fine now. So it is. We didn't really need to scrape it, did we? We've just been out for the morning, had our breakfast rolls along at the pavilion, and in the meantime, the sun's come round, and the sun, good old sun's done its job, and we're no longer frozen. All that's left is to wipe down the windscreen with a cloth, and we both do the bits that we can reach. Then we're back on the road. We're heading for Loch Dun, and it's a beautiful morning for a drive. When we see Dun Castle at the side of the road, we know that we've arrived as our park-up is just around the next bend. We're early, but already there's several cars here, as it's a popular spot for walkers and tourists who've come to see the castle ruins. We've parked up and I head over with Kira to have a look at the castle on the banks of the loch. Loch Dun is southern Scotland's largest loch, stretching about 10 kilometres from Ness Glen in the north to beyond Carrick Forest in the south. Not a lot is known about Dun Castle. It's thought to have been built in the late 1200s by an Earl of Carrick, either Robert the Bruce or his father, also called Robert. The castle originally stood on this tiny island in Loch Dun. The entire castle was taken down, stone by stone, and re-erected on its present spot in 1935 in an effort to save it as the water levels rose due to a hydroelectric scheme. Kira and I head off for a walk on the Craig Lee Trail, which takes us up the hill at the back of the castle. There's a touch of snow on the trail, which takes us to a viewing point at the top. You get to the top of this walk, I have to say, it's absolutely breathtaking. The views are fabulous because you've got this little patch of trees and you get these glimpses through to Loch Dune down there and all those white fluffy clouds around. Oh, it's absolutely marvellous. And then if I swing the camera around, we've got a rare specimen of a tree here. Uh, this tree is known as uh, Pupi hangionus. It's a rare Scottish tree and when the flowers come out they are these kind of green colour and they just hang there delicately in the wind and sometimes some of them just fall down like a little bit of fallen fruit down there below. It's not what I planned doing in my retirement but I can't bring myself to leave it there. We head back to tell Trish about our walk and that botanical curiosity. No, it's disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Anyway, I brought them down and put them in that bin. No, oh, you're a kind soul. I'm a mug. <laughs> so I'm um, picking up other people's dog sh <sighs> No happy. I'm, I'm really no happy. Anyway, get over it, Mike. We're here to enjoy ourselves. We're going to stay over here the night and then we're going to wrap it up. Uh, I'm going to put the camera away and we're just going to enjoy it now for a little while, aren't we? Yeah. Film free. Yeah. And we'll pick up with you guys on the next one. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye. Ta-da. <laughs>